Hello everyone. In this video, we talk about discrete random variables. First, what is random variables? A random variable is a variable whose value is determined by the outcome of a random experiment. For example, you roll two six-sided dice. Suppose we are interested in the sum of the two dice. The possible outcomes of the experiment, which is the sum of the two dice, can take on value 2, 3, up to 12. If you roll a 1 on both of the two dice, then the sum is 2. If you roll a 1 on one die and a 2 on the other die, then the sum is 1 plus 2 equals 3. And suppose you roll 6 on both of the two dice, then the sum is 12. Let x denote the random variable that is defined as the sum of the dice, then x can take on value 2, 3, up to 12. And here we call the random variable x as a discrete random variable. Let's take a look at the definition of discrete random variables. A random variable that can take on a finite or countable number of distinct values is called a discrete random variable. For example, you flip three coins. Let the random variable y denote the number of heads appearing. What possible values can y take? y can equals 0, 1, 2, and 3. When y equals 0, that means there is no head in your three flips. y equals 2 means you get two heads out of the three flips. Let's take a look at another scenario. You flip a corn until the first tail appears. Let the random variable w denote the number of flips required. What are the possible values the random variable w can take? The minimum value must be 1. You must have the first flip in order to get the first tail. If the first flip is a head, you need to take the second flip. If this second flip is a head, then you need to take the third flip until you get a tail. So W can take on value one, two, three, up to infinity. Let's take a look at more examples related to discrete random variables. For example, the number of cars sold at a dealership in a month, the number of people coming to a theater on a certain day, the number of complaints received at the office of an airline on a given day, the number of customers visiting a bank during any given hour. So these are examples of discrete random variables. And then we move on to another category, the continuous random variable. A random variable that can assume any value contained in one or more intervals is called a continuous random variable. For example, the height of a person, the time taken to complete an examination, the amount of milk in a container, the lifetime of a car. Let's focus on discrete random variables first. For example, the scenario is to roll two six-sided dice. Then x denote the random variable that is defined as the sum of the dice. x can take on values 2, 3, up to 12. And here, 
are there 36 possible outcomes? The first number denotes the number appears on the first row, and then the second number corresponds to the numbers on the second row. We want the sum of the dice. So we can assign probability to each possible values of the random variable x. So when the outcome is 1, 1, then x equals 2. What is the probability of getting x equals 2? Out of this 36 possible outcomes, only one outcome corresponds to x equals 2. So the probability of getting the sum of the dice equals 2 is 1 over 36. And then when x equals 3, the sum of the two dice equals 3. So the possible outcomes can be the first row is a 2 and the second row is a 1, or the first row is a 1, and the second row is a two. Two outcomes out of the 36 possible outcomes corresponds to the event that x equals three. Therefore, the probability that x equals three equals two over 36. Proceed similarly, x equals four. The probability is three over 36 x equals 5, the probability is 4 over 36. x equals to 6, the probability is 5 over 36. And when x equals 7, the probability is 6 over 36. We can continue with x equals to 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, and compute the probabilities accordingly. Then we can list out all the probabilities. The collection of the probabilities for all possible values of the random variables is called the probability distribution. And here, the random variable is x, so we say that this probability forms the probability distribution of x. And the symbols, we can write it as p of x equals to small x, or we can write using the small letter p of x. The capital letter x corresponds to the name of the random variable. And then the small letter x corresponds to the value of that random variable. We can express this probability distribution in the form of a table and make sure that when you sum up the probabilities in the probability distribution, the sum must equal one. For discrete random variables, instead of expressing the distribution in the form of a table, we can express it as a graph. On the horizontal axis, we have the value of the random variables. And then the vertical axis corresponds to P of X, which is the probability. So here when X equals 2, the probability is here, which is corresponds to the probability 0 0.0278. And when x equals 8, this is the corresponding probability. The corresponding probabilities is 0 0.1389 when x equals 8. Let's take a look at another example. You flip a coin repeatedly, 
and let W denote the random variable that is defined as the number of flips required to get the first tail. We have seen that W can take on value one, two, three, up to infinity. So the sample space is, okay, either the first flip is a tail, then you get a T. If your first flip is a head, you need the second flip. And here the second flip is a tail. So we have HT, in this case, W equals two, or you can have H, H, T, W equals three, or H, 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 T, in this case, W equals four. And then the sample space goes on forever until you get the first tail. Now, suppose the corn is a biased corn, such that the probability of getting a tail is 0 0.7. Equivalently, the probability of getting a head equals 0 0.3. The probability of W equals one. That means you need only one flip to get a tail. So the corresponding probability is P of one equals 0 0.7. What if W equals two? The first flip is a head and the second flip is a tail. The probability W equals two, or we can write it as P of two, equals 0.3 times 0.7. 0.3 is the probability of getting a head. 0.7 is the probability that you get a tail. Multiply them together, we get 0 0.21. And then what if W equals three? You need three flip to get the first tail. The corresponding probability is 0 0.3 square. The first two flips are heads. So we have 0 0.3 times 0 0.3. And then the third flip is a tail. The probability is 0.7. So 0.3 squared times 0.7, we get 0 0.063. This is the probability that you need three flips to get the first tail. And then the calculation goes on forever. W equals four, five, six, et cetera. So the probability distribution of W can be expressed in the form of a table like this. But this table goes on forever. Or you can express it in the form of a graph. On the horizontal axis, we have the random variable w. w equals 1, the probability is 0 0.7. w equals 2, the probability is 0 0.21. And so I have w equals 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and et cetera. All right, so this is the summary of the probability distribution of W. If you examine the pattern regarding the expressions for W equals to one, two, three, and four, you can write out a general expression. And we call this general expression as the probability mass function. So what is the probability mass function of W? We have the general form, P of W equals W equals 0.3 raised to the power W minus one times 0.7. So if you need W flip to get the first tail. That means the first W minus one flips must be head. And the probability of getting a head in one flip is 0 0.3. The first W minus one flips must be head. 
So we have the expression 0 0.3 times 0 0.3 times 0 0.3 all together multiply 0 0.3 w minus one times. So this is the expression 0.3 raised to the power w minus one. The first w minus one flips are heads. And then the last flip must be a tail because we need to get the first tail. So having a tail, this flip must be the last flip. And the corresponding probability is 0.7. So multiplying this together, we get an expression that we need W flipped to get the first tail. And this is called the probability mass function. Or we can write it as P of W. That's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. In the next video, we will talk more about discrete probability distribution.